So what do you get when your house has a bunch of windows on the south side? Besides a beautiful view. Uh, you get free energy. Passive solar heating in the winter. As I mentioned in last month's post, this house has it in space, the whole south wall with windows. Now the biggest problem with passive solar heating is the high to low temperature swings you get. Here, for example, in December that swing is often 25 degrees from the low of 60 at night to 85 in the afternoon. Now the trick to mitigating that swing is to add mass to the inside of your home so the sun heats that up instead of your air. Ideally, something that has a high heat storage capacity how much energy they can store per volume. A cubic foot of concrete, for example, can store 2,400 times more energy than a cubic foot of air. So a couple years ago, I took out about a half a ton of carpet. It was everywhere. The previous owner loved it. Uh, and I replaced it with uh, tile, uh, uh, rock, and um, thick laminate flooring. And I found it was a good excuse to buy a half ton of piano. Uh, that laminate flooring, by the way, you can buy thick uh, 15 millimeter flooring for about $2 a square foot shipped from the internet. Just FYI. So all that helped a little bit. That 25 degree temperature swing uh, used to be 30 degrees or more when we moved in four years ago. Uh, but we're looking for something better. So um, more mass. Uh, thought about hiring Barnum & Bailey's now retired circus elephants. We could fit a couple of them in here to live with us. But um, found something a little more practical. Actually has better heat storage capacity than concrete. Almost twice as much better. And it's cheaper than dirt. And it's easy to move. Easier to move than, uh, say, a quadricopter. Which, by the way, I'm much better at flying than I was a couple months ago in those embarrassing videos. Um, so, uh, water, that's the secret. Uh, so what we installed was a 10 foot high by 15 foot wide, 1300 gallon, five and a half ton wall of water. Um, I took a video of it when I filled it up uh, a couple of weeks ago, I'll show you that. Next. What we have here is an unusual way to shower, or perhaps something else. Let's find out. Follow the puppy, follow the yellow brick hose. Unless I hear noise, oh, I see we're filling up a bucket. No, something more ambitious perhaps. Whoa, we're filling up a bucket. And out of that, we are filling up 10 buckets. We're gonna take some blue pond dye. Actually, I started with this pond dye, but it's more like a greenish blue. This stuff's blue blue, like Caribbean blue. Amazon for 15 bucks. And we're going to do the little mad science trick. Poured it into there, sucked it into here, one half ounce. We're going to take this clear water in this tank and make it look blue like these other tanks. This part's really cool. So we take, and hopefully I can do this without dropping the camera, into the 10 foot of water. And so it injects. And in a couple hours, then it'll work its way all the way to the bottom. So here we have the tubes up and running, collecting energy. Nice sunny day today. And uh, Poppy's very excited, as usual. So now we're into the optimization phase. Lots of variables, like uh, what color do we make the water? A darker blue, a lighter blue, or a black? How to circulate the water? How to circulate the air? How to, if and how to sanitize the water? So to help answer some of those questions, I installed uh, half a dozen of these one-wire temperature sensors uh, monitored by an Arduino, why I connected Arduino box here. This also has a dust sensor that I showed last month. Uh, I'll put a little fan on it. That helps quite a bit for the dust sensor accuracy. Um, so these uh, one-wire temperature sensors, they're pretty amazing. You can daisy-chain them together. They're about $2 a piece. And they're accurate to about a tenth of a degree Fahrenheit. So I have them all over the place. There's one downstairs, there's one upstairs, there's one halfway into this tube, there's one way half into this darker tube, and there's one down at the bottom of this tube, and there's one in this black tube here, you can't see it. 
I'm going to show you some of the plots that we generate from that data. That Arduino box publishes the temperature data it collects once a minute up to uh, the X Ivly cloud service. And then on uh, my GitHub web page, I have this page which allows me to query that data using the X Ivly and Rickshaw plotting libraries. So here you can see uh, the solar data, partly cloudy day there, a mostly sunny day yesterday, and a fully sunny day today. You can see the outside temperature, uh, it's getting pretty warm, spring is coming. This service is pretty slick because I can turn these plotting functions, I can use this legend here and turn off the uh, solar and outside ticks uh, data and it auto scales to what's left. I can also use this control to zoom in on just the last day's worth of data. So here you can see the uh, downstairs temperature peaking uh, here and the upstairs temperature is just peaking now at about 5.15 in the afternoon. And then the temperature from the various tanks, tank 1, tank to tank 1 by the way is that dark tank so you can see the slope of that is uh, significantly, it's about 20% steeper so it collects 20% more energy than the light blue tanks. And here is the uh, two blue tanks, the light blue and the dark blue are about the same. This is the bottom of the dark blue tank and you can see right at this point the temperatures equalized. Now how did that happen you ask? I will show you that next. It involves air bubbles. So I bought a bunch of aquarium airline hose and connectors and lead weights, about $50 total. And I put one of these at the bottom of each one of these tubes. It's a simple T connector with the appropriate amount of lead weights to keep it sunk when air is going through it. And then I hooked it up to an air valve and a compressor down in a basement closet. I'll show you that next. So down past this guard dog in the stairway closet is our air compressor. Connected to the air compressor we have this $10 12 volt valve which we drive with a 12 volt transformer which is connect, controlled by a Z-Wave device which we can control either locally or remotely. I'll show you the remote control in a minute. This air compressor is really slick. It's a six gallon $200 um, compressor that is really pretty quiet compared to most compressors. It's 60 decibels. It has enough volume that uh, six tanks, depending on how much we run the bubbles, only turn on a couple times a day. And if this door closed, you hardly notice it. So as I demoed in some previous videos, I control the Z-Wave devices with my home automation system. For example, Bubbles 30. That will turn the bubbles on for, that, that really I should, you want to turn that on for 30 seconds. Those bubbles will equalize the temperature variation from the cold water at the bottom to the hot water at the top. I found it takes about 60 seconds for that water of bubbles for that uh, temperature to get equalized. For the air circulation, I have this high efficiency DC fan motor. It takes about 10 watts of power on high speed. I have that connected to this house as well tube fan on. And this is a little trickier because these fancy electronic devices, when you power them up, they don't come on. You're supposed to hit the uh, buttons to power them on. So I hacked that problem by adding this $2 infrared emitter and connected it up to the Arduino box I showed you earlier. So once the house powers the fan on, uh, applies power to the fan with the, another Z-Wave uh, relay, the Arduino box will send an IR command to the fan to set it to the proper speed and uh, turn the oscillation on. Uh, now, so I'm still collecting data to figure out how often we should have that fan on or either run it at night to cool the tubes down. How often should we run the bubbles to equalize that uh, water temperature? So, a lot of data uh, variables, but this is the sort of thing we engineers thrive on. So, I'll collect that data and maybe do a, a subsequent uh, post in a month or two. Uh, one last thing i got to show you. At night, this stuff is really cool. Yeah, I put lights on uh, half those tubes. Okay, quick nighttime video. Turn tube lights on. It looks really cool with Turn air bubbles. On. Turn air bubbles on. So we Turn have five lights on. on some inexpensive uh, night light 
stands. Uh, four watts each, about 20 watts total. And uh, about every other tube lit up. And if you look from the outside, I'll show you that too. So this is what it looks like from the outside. And we have a lot of fun with LED lights casting plant shadows in the ceiling. It's probably about 40 watts of light total there. In the backyard we have another 20 watts. That's not too bad, especially compared to what's being burnt by Salt Lake City there. Or the moon. Let me show you view from the basement here. This is the view from the downstairs area. And the sound effect's pretty cool too. It's like you're living in a big fish aquarium. Somebody turned the outdoor lights back on. So was the project worth it? It's about $3,000, mostly for the 10 fiberglass tubes. I won't know till next November, December, January, how much those big 25 degree temperature swings were improved. But I compared the data from the week prior to installation, end of February, uh, also with the data from last year, and I saw that the temperature swings were improved by about 30%, from a uh, 16-degree swing down to about 11-degree swing. So that was pretty good. In terms of the color of the tubes, I could see that the slightly darker blue tube absorbs about 5% um, more energy. The dark tube absorbs about 20% more energy. In terms of the air and water circulation, um, I need more days with the exact same temperature and sunlight to compare against back-to-back -back days. So probably report back in a year on conclusions with that. Um, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching.